It's just something that I kind of discovered today. But I bring it to your attention. The timing, the timing marks on these cam gears, they are marked with two sharp pointed chisel marks. Two teeth will have a mark on them. The, uh, as such, two indents. And, and most of the time they look professional, but occasionally you will find one of them a little bit askew. Not very often. I, I've, I have found a couple that the, the little indents was not uniform. And what prompted this video here, and it's kind of to answer a question or two, uh, this, this backing plate here uh, being a 1920 year model Type M, this one was equipped with an L Magneto International. But the, but the point here is, uh, I have heard the question, questions ask is my timing gear don't have any any markings on it. How do I time the engine? Well, uh, and this example right here is probably where your timing mark went. They put it on this gear. It's got two of them. These two teeth right here are marked quite professionally even even indented lined up perfectly and if you come right on around there is two more two more indents as equally as professional as these two but uh, one of them is just a little bit down this way a little bit okay also with this two with this set of marks here there is a uh file mark right under this one and a file mark under this one and then there's a file mark with a long shoulder going this way this set this set and then also uh right here uh if these was not here this could come be confused with a timing mark and it possibly is that somebody marked that and then decided it was wrong and took a file, filed it away because there is an indent filed here and there's two faint marks there. So actually this, this gear has been marked three different times. The part number is a 9978T, 1920-year model. When you come up on an engine like this, I'm talking about a first-time uh, engine owner a, 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 to open the engine up and find this in there and have no experience whatsoever. What do you do? Well, there there is a there is a there is a certain degrees before top dead center that pretty much works in all engines. So you can work from 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 them numbers and time your engine. This gear right here, uh, both of these are original to the engines. Uh, as as uh, looking at the back of them, the, the shafts has not been replaced. That's the way they came from the factory with two. They, they put that in there and then they put two locking bolts in there and then broke them off. This one right here happens to be an understrike gear. This is a very early, one of the first gears. And i show you something. The early, early ones, the cam shaft, I guess you'd call that, is shorter on the understrike engine than the, the double-lobed, this kind right here that's got the two lobes on the cam, the, the one lobe had a shorter camshaft in it. Very good. And this is a very good, this gear is almost equally equal to the new gear. Very good. Very good condition all over. Very little work. 
it's I'm proud to get that I'm going to use this uh, the, these engines the way they're built if they're if they're left to set in the junk pile uh, moisture and water gunk will accumulate right down in the bottom down there that's the low part and it'll rust off the bottom of that gear down there oh I've got a mini I've got a mini of an example uh, there's one right there the low part was right here you can see where it's just rusted badly the uh, uh, let's find a oh this right here this is a replaced shaft as affirmed by it having four of these locking pins in there uh, they're not it looks like they're just straight pins driven in there and you'll find this kind of markings quite often where there is two factory markings and then someone has took a file filed a V right in between them and then on the opposite side over there they filed another V the uh, uh, but what it would do if you get anything out of this video whatsoever right here is, is I was uh, cleaning these up uh, getting them set aside for use and kind of came up on that one there that was double marked uh, the the keyway right here okay uh, if, if, if you was putting a new shaft in here which I'm going to do that to, not not sometime soon but that will be a shop product or shop project to replace I've got several of them that needs to be replaced it's it's not a big deal it's just a normal machine shop project but uh, the, the the center of this keyway right here if you make a if you do the calculations on it there the math it comes out to be right there between them two teeth right there okay if you if you count from this tooth right here the one on this side if you count all of these teeth around through here till you get to the first one that's marked it will be 16 teeth in there all of these are all of these are the same all, ever, all of these checked out with the same number the um, uh, these I think a couple of these here actually was late model uh, EK type uh, equipped engines the um, uh, and, and I will use that number when I replace this shaft right here uh, put the shaft in there and orientate it to where that it lines up with that 16th tooth over there and then drill the two holes here and pin it fast uh, that's the way that's the way you do that to get the timing set back with the original marks from the factory the um, another thing that I did discover and this is not good this is very bad very bad this uh, this gib key that goes in here if you put the ruler on it it's uh, it's quarter inch that's a quarter inch gib key right there okay now, now this this one right here is the one that was been replaced and what someone done is when they cut that keyway and you can tell that that's not a factory when they cut this keyway with a end mill and this keyway here was cut with a cutter. The uh, and, and and where they went wrong here, the the end mill is, is that's perfectly good to cut a keyway that way, except they cut it the wrong size. They cut it five sixteenths. So when you drive this, when you drive this gib key in here, it don't it's not tight. So you could actually have the cam in there the timing off a sixteenth of an inch immediately because of the, the side play here if according to which which side it to uh, lean to it's just not good it's not good uh, it's a quarter inch kind of just tidying up loose ends and thought this might be of some interest a double marked timing gear and 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 and, and I've took I've oh it's untold amount of of these engines I have taken apart I'm talking about the type M now only I see international harvester um, all of them I have took apart I have never found an original gear that didn't have a marking on it now 
saying that this is a, an original gear but it's rusted so bad that there's no markings visible but but I would say that they was a mark on this gear okay now if you have one in this condition and it's still pretty decent you know you, you could actually use this gear if it was the only one you had you could use it uh, and at that at that point what you would do is uh, find the take a straight edge put it in there and find the two teeth right there and you see I've got it marked already that's where it lines up that center tooth okay to find uh, where the timing marks are then you would you would use that number and count 16 teeth around here and it comes out to that one right there you can see a file mark on those two on those two teeth right there is a file mark on, on those two so if, if you could if you could look over here see it's rusted you can't tell if that's where the where the teeth was ever marked at here but it's just rusted too bad they they just non-existence but that's not to say they was not there to start with I just haven't found one I just just a little just a little something in there leave, leave a comment leave a comment uh, from here on the East Coast of Arkansas, Shop Dog Sam. Now let's get on with the show.